Right, so we're back answering your questions. Just me and Roger today. Foxy has a real job. The lucky bastards. Uh, and Andy Ryan couldn't make it today. It was the Andy Ryan show. He was in fine fettle the other day. I'll go start with the uh, the questions that we got vis-a-vis. Um, vis-a-vis is a tone that means just about. Oh, okay. thanks for that. Guys. And uh, um, <laughs> about uh, Andy's uh, performance, uh, particularly as it, as it pertains to Roger from the last day. Uh, here's our number of questions that I got in. Can you get Andy to do the wrist lock on, on Dardis, but from the other side? Uh, Robbie, does Andy Robbie Brennan is the fuck <laughs> Does Andy have a wrist lock from side control? And does it work on Roger? Uh, where's the guy next one? Were you invited to Foxy's naturist wedding? Is it true the cake was made from hummus? Hummus and avocado, that's an urban legend in <laughs> Ireland. Yeah. Foxy's naturist nude wedding. <laughs> Uh, do any of you know how to do a cartwheel? You can feck off to answer your questions. Uh, you see Andy Ryan doing a cartwheel. He can, he fucking flies. He's, he's a very agile man. Fucking chew him. Um, there's lots of uh, lots and lots about your wrist lock. I like this one. Um, uh, and ask Andy to please show a wrist lock from the back, from mount or the back, and make sure it's on Roger. Seems to be a common theme. I would have said. I actually do a very nice wrist lock from the back. Maybe you could show it later. Show but it later. When Andy comes, <laughs> I'm not doing that here later. Um, okay, so we're answering questions. Um, we've got a, f- a couple of fun ones and uh, a couple of more serious ones. So uh, the first is, what's your favourite martial arts film after Roadhouse? Of course, you have martial arts films. Really? Oh, oh. the quality. Answer one, and I, I think about it. Well, I was, I, I don't have like a fa- I used to watch them all when I was a kid, like John Bruce Lee movies and stuff like that. But I don't have a favourite one. But then I was thinking about it in the car on the way up because I got this question from like, yeah. broadside the Jewish. You see what I was thinking about it. Um, and I was thinking about Rose Point Blank. Did you, did you ever watch Rose Point Blank? John Cusick? And the fight in the corridor? No. And Benny the Jet. You know no. who Benny the Jet was? No, I heard he Benny the Jet. Kickboxer. Yeah, yeah. So he's fighting him. And like co- it's good. It's good. Fight lasts about 10 minutes, but. Yeah, but somebody right. old answer, asked that question. Who's 87? Collie 87. Well, he was born in 1987. Collie. Collie. Oh, my God. Yeah, it's an old people question. All right. It's an old man question. Yeah, let, me, let me ask a question. Yeah, you go for it. Here's one. Best music to roll to besides rap ballads. Rap ballads. What, what do you listen to in the gym when you train? Uh, it, it's all my music. We, we, we did a collaborative playlist before, yeah. and it was the worst shite I've ever heard in my life. It turns out you might think that you're going to grab and pull in all of the best music from everybody's taste, but actually you're going to pull in the worst. You're going to be like... Really? Yeah, it's terrible. Uh, no, what I listen to is, uh, I, I'm very varied. Anyway, I have a very varied musical taste, I like to think. It could be anybody from Shaka Khan right through to uh, Metallica, right back around to uh, movie soundtracks and stuff like that. Random stuff, yeah. Yeah. We don't copy I'm going to pull up my, the playlist, the gym playlist. I bet it'll all be Tool. No, it's a bit of Tool. I like Tool. If it was up to me, I'd play Tool, but you have to keep the masses happy. Sometimes I walk by the gym, or I'm walking up the stairs from the, the, like the gym that we have downstairs you know and yeah. uh, I listen to the, the <coughs> yeah I listen to that and I go Jesus Christ is there anything more demotivational than listening to shite music like in training but here we go here's some of my ones Tool Bob Dylan Tin Lizzy Dire Straits The Ramones The Hoax no Ram music yet but getting there you no, can hear like kind of tilting towards it Here's somebody. Here's a fella for everybody to check out, Natalia Na, Nathaniel Rayclif. Do you know him? Yeah, yeah. he's solid. Yeah, the, the new music, young yeah, people's music. Young people's music. Yeah, Fleetwood Mac. That's what you need. A bit of Fleetwood Mac, Led Zeppelin, of course. What have we got? What we got here? And uh, Danny Brown, John Hopkins, Hans Zimmer, Smashing Pumpkins, Sylvan Nesso, Iron Monster, Queens of the Stone Age, Arctic Monkeys. It's very, very broad, very general. Sure, it's yeah. very good. A lot of 70s soul music. James Brown. Ah, you can't beat a bit of James Brown. You can't beat a bit of soul music. Uh, can we get a TikTok highlight reel? No, you can start off. Uh, and even though it's can't reel, sorry, I read that before. Who was the first black belt in Ireland? It was John Kavanagh. I know that you're trying to say something con- con- uh, very uh, controversial there when you're asking that question, like I'm going to answer something else. But uh, there was a couple of foreigners in before that, of course. But uh, first black belt in Ireland, first Irish black belt was John Kavanagh. Um, what more stuff about Foxy's and Natural's wedding, sorry. It's all, it goes on like that. How long do you have to train before you can skip the warm-up and do your own stretches? I assume that means people coming in and skipping the warm-ups uh, when, you know, when they get more advanced. Uh, that is... Never. Never. Never skip the warm-up. 
I was coming in and never believe you're too good for the warm-up either. Um, yeah. A lot of times people start to arrive later and later as we go. In my gym, um, we used to do various things when people turned up late. And one of them was they had to hold a clock. So I tried to exercise, but nobody did them. So you just said, 20 burpees now if you're late. For every minute you're late. But then lads would be coming up and they'd be going, well, I came here from work. Like, I'm here yeah. as quick as I can. So I used to take the clock down from the wall. And whoever was the latest had to hold the clock for the warm-up. So even when they were doing their rolls and their tumbles. Oh, yeah. Then I went through about three clocks and I went to, you know, half the lads were bashing clocks off the ground. Um, but no, nobody really shows up late. People always do the warm up in my club anyway. A few of the, uh, few not of the true, my fans. No. Fuck the world. You, yeah. need, you need to be. Ah, uh, yeah, but look, people are, people are coming from work. Some people are. I understand that, though. Yeah. But equally, it's fun to punish people. It's part of, part of, part of the fun of being a coach. Um, I want to ask you a question. Can I ask you a question? Sure. Great. Um, it's about your uh, jiu jitsu upbringing as it were, and yeah. uh, where you started out and all. So I know the story, I know the crack, but people watching don't know the crack. So you started in the US? I started, in, I'm one of the few people, yeah, I started in New York in an MMA gym. With, uh, Ron, uh, G Ron Athletics, Christian Montes, he's an American black belt. Nicest man you'd ever meet. Uh, really good jiu-jitsu. I was there for, I think about four years, maybe five years, I can't remember. Um, and the plan was I was going home from America. I was, I was coming back to Ireland <coughs> and I needed six months of training because I couldn't train in the evenings. I had a baby and he told me to go to Marcellus. And then I ended up staying in Marcellus for three years. <laughs> then I didn't go home. <laughs> <laughs> that was it, yeah. And how was, what was like, obviously right, there's a huge difference between training in what would you say, a regular black belt's gym versus training with Marcelo? Yes. So what was the, f the biggest difference? Like on day one when you walked in, did you know? Uh, in a different spot, like? Yeah, I think on my first day I actually got to train with Marcelo because there was probably 10 people on the mat. So the gym was new. Mm. So that straight away is going to... You know, I probably didn't realise at the time how lucky I was. You know that sort of way? Yeah, yeah. Well, you didn't realise till you came home. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, uh, but yeah, the level like I was a purple belt, and I went in, <coughs> and uh, I actually I remember going in, and I the class was only an hour. I was like, it's only an hour, and she's like, yeah, they come back to me at the end of the class. <laughs> uh, I'm like, Tell me how you got. Uh, so it was just it was a, a fifty minute warm up, fifty minutes technique, and only half an hour rolling. But I was fucked. Yeah, and I was supposed to be a, like a purple belt. Yeah, yeah. I got killed by everybody else. Man. Different level. Just different, level, different pace, different, uh, different intensity. Like e everybody there was a good competitor, and yeah, just different level. And was there one thing we, you, you, I remember you saying to me before that you noticed when you, when you came to Ireland, it was the acceptance of positions was yes. the big thing that changed. So like, to explain that, like uh, Roger myself trained together, together quite a bit, and one of the things that. Um, even when I started training with you, it was like, this, this, this guy doesn't go away. Like, it's, you know, even when you were, even if I did sweep you. Yeah, that was it, yeah. Which was very rare. I would be like, this is, this is almost, this is a harder fight than being in guard. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Like trying to make this, the sweep stick. Yeah. And I think you were saying before that that was one of the biggest things that you took away from, from that level, that level of gym. Yeah, well, I, I, I look, probably just had that without even realizing, but when, if you sweep somebody, uh, when I came home first, just people accepting the sweep, like so, just a basic hoop sweep. Once they hit, once their ass hits the mat, that was in their mind they were swept. Whereas, if when I came home, I was better, I was much better than I am now, I think. But when I came home, you sweep, you get swept. The hard work is to come, you know what I mean? Yeah, the hard work is to keep the fucker <coughs> down and to keep him on his back yeah. and get on top. Whereas you, when, when I got swept, you straight back up instead of just accepting the position. And yeah, yeah. Accepting the bottom position. I think the first time I learned that was, um, so we, my, my story is completely different to that. I didn't have a high level instructor for a long, long time. So I had, um, I started with SPG, the, there was afternoon class. Yeah. Like the only place with afternoon class, one of the only places doing jujitsu, never mind yeah. anything else. And it was Taekwondo black belt. And uh, then after that, I, I went, I trained with Andy, and Andy was my coach, and Andy was probably purple belt at the time. And it's very, as you noticed from the last episode, Andy was a really, he was, he's been a bit modest. I suppose, like, he was a very high-level yes. judo athlete, uh, bordering on an Olympian, and uh, his, uh, I think he was unbeaten for something like eight years or something like that, consistently in Ireland, so across Ireland, never, never beaten him something like six, seven or eight years, something like that. And when I went up there, 
uh, it was a big change there. And I have to say, I learned a lot, Tony and Andy, in terms of standards and what you expect from yourself and from others as well. Mm. So he like you wouldn't like take laziness. You couldn't have a bad night. You know what I mean? If you had a bad night, it wasn't bad. But if you you couldn't have a lazy night, where you just came in and just dosed it around, you know, yeah. it wasn't it wasn't something you could do. But then um, we went off and I was basically training on my own. Then I was training with my own students for a while. Admar Barbosa came over at the time. You remember Admar? Yeah. yeah came over. Admar Barbosa came over and he changed a load of things that I, that I was doing. But then I remember we went to a training camp in Poland, and there was a load of guys there who would have been um, really high level guys. European level, then yeah. it's purple and brown belts, and uh, a couple of guys who were qualified and, and competed at the ABCC that year. And there was about a hundred lads in the mats, and it was actually manky. It was one of the, the dirtiest. It That's where it's Ringworm came to Ireland. From. Oh, and geez, we brought we brought your Ringworm in. And there was lads sleeping on the mats, and we were there for a week, and the sweat would have been pooled on the mat afterwards. And the lads would just hang the geese up, you know, lie down and go Probably sleep on the mats mats. as well. Ugh. Nah, they were judo mats. It was a beautiful judo facility. But uh, it was a lovely facility. It was actually publicly owned. But uh, I remember going out one day and I was like, I was much more technical than most lads in my group. I was the purple belt at the time. Yeah. I remember sweeping lads with my face. It was a late half guard sweep. And I went, hey, I've got this halfway through the air. And the guy just went, boing, I bounced back up. Yeah. And it was a scrap. And I went, these guys don't stay stuck, you know. I have to change that. I have to change that attitude in my place as well. But it was a big, big eye opener for me that time. And obviously you had your... It was the opposite for you because you came back here and saw that. Like, yeah. do you know what I mean? Like, yeah. I wonder sometimes. Um, not that you. Like, I, I wonder though, uh, and this is something I've spoken about with other guys before. I wonder is it almost the other way around when you go to other places? Like, we're talking about the US as like sort of a pinnacle of jujitsu, yeah. like Marcelo and whoever else is trained over there, whether it's Sol or anybody, anybody else. Like yeah. that. But when I get lads going over to the states now. They talk about like going into gyms and training in academies, and it's almost the opposite. So the Irish level is higher in terms of maybe not technicality and, and technique, but almost in aggression and um, competitiveness, and like there's a lot kind of a not that there's a bit of McDojo thing, kind of if you know what I mean. Not that level, but that the maybe the, the level isn't as yeah, but uh, it's it's like there's so many gyms probably over there now that yeah, it's a, a lot of the black like how, how many black belts around the world have come over from karate or fucking taekwondo later on yeah you know not like us when we were in our 20s coming over yeah we yeah. were coming over in the 40s i guess it's a different it's a different zone isn't it it's a different yeah. world then could be a bit more a bit harder to kind of impress upon your younger students yeah. as well the importance of tra like you know training a certain way when you're yeah. not really at a competitive level like imagine only starting jujitsu now Lots of lads starting to just yeah, but as uh, well, like as yeah. as a coach or as a yeah, it'd be difficult. It'd be tough, it'd be right? Difficult. Yeah, yeah. I know that there's a lot of people as well use. Um, it's like a, a, a string to their bow to have jujitsu in their academy, yeah. as opposed to their focus. So they've gone and got their maybe a purple or brown or black belt. Even they've got it as a business decision, yeah. as opposed to getting it as a, a love. Yeah. Things. I was thinking about that the other day as well. People are saying to me, you know, everybody's texting me about this this whole coronavirus thing, and they're saying things like, "But well, what could you do instead of jujitsu in your academy?" So since you can't do jujitsu in your academy, and like it's what it's supposed to be two weeks now, but it's probably going to be more than that, right? So what else could you do? Would you think about doing this? Would you think about doing that? Would you think about doing uh, like cardio stuff or you know strength and conditioning all that kind of stuff? And I said, no, it's not what I do. I don't want mm. to do that. I don't want to. If I want to do that, I would have done that already. And I know there's loads of places like that who are like, oh, we're doing fitness work and we're doing this and we're doing that. And it doesn't, it doesn't tickle me at all to do it. Do hey, uh, in, let's say if we're still here in six months, I'd be doing Zumba myself. Who gives a fuck? <laughs> <laughs> you'd be having, I'd be you'd wearing mean booty your shorts and Zumba, yeah. <laughs> booty shorts and lycra. Uh, but yeah, no, I'd be, I'd be exactly the same. That yeah. was a big thing I came, well, before I came home. I remember I, I um, right before I came home, I, I think I was online to you even messaging you at some stage and I had, me, yeah. I, I had no I'd message you once before I, I had met or two. I think that's I obviously I'd met Foxy in Marcellus I'd met Liam I think I'd met Fergal a couple of times yeah, well, of course you met Fergal everybody meets Fergal so I was messaging yeah. I was messaging a few people like that and uh, asking do you, like, if I go home can I make can I like, do this make this my job or yeah, yeah. and everybody was saying no no chance yeah, you'll need to do MMA or you'll need to do fitness classes and you'll need to do all this 
How long was that? How long ago was that? That's fucking seven years ago now. You probably couldn't have made it your job seven years ago. I did. <laughs> yeah, well, you did, you poor bastard. But, like, do you know what I mean? Like, how different was it, though, to now? Well, when I came home, uh, so Foxy, obviously, is the founder of Royal Grafton Academy. So he had... Founding father. Founding grandfather. The pedophilias. He had, I'd say, five students. Yeah. So that was my first night walking in into a room that was fucking... Yeah. Uh, Foxy and four other lads. They set up, they set up in the Spartan gym, was it? Yeah, upstairs. Yeah, yeah, the tiny, yeah, tiny little gym. Yeah. I, I, I fucking didn't know what to make of that night. Oh, shit. Yeah. yeah. Damn it. I know, it was, I was, we, when we were in, um, <coughs> so we, I have four apprentices? Five. So we've gone from, it used to be Jiu-Jitsu Gi night was the smallest night. Biggest night was no Gi because the MMA guys mm. and the grapplers were at that. And then the MMA classes were the biggest. Then really? It was the next biggest after that. And then slowly over the years, maybe it's because of my focus changed as well. I wasn't as committed to MMA as well. Yeah. So the focus changed a little bit over the years. And eventually then um, I looked around the map and went, sure, nobody was going to anymore. Nobody was. Well, people still did Nogi, but like, nobody yeah. does MMA anymore. Nobody wants to do Jiu-Jitsu. Lads used to start with me with MMA. And in about a year's time, they'd be doing Jiu-Jitsu. So that's what they, they, would, they, they thought they wanted the MMA fighters. And actually, in fact, they, they yeah. remembered they didn't like it. Or they discovered they didn't like it, you know? Most seven years? Seven years you got back? Seven years, March. Seven years now, yeah? This month? Fucking hell. A long time. Yeah, it doesn't feel, it doesn't feel like that. Well, yeah. yeah, it doesn't feel like that long ago. But the it really has changed. Like, so you were a purple belt when you came back. I was probably a purple belt. I was belt a brown belt. Were you? Was I a purple belt or a brown belt? You're a new brown belt. What, what, year, was, what year was that, Michael? 2013. Mm. No, I got my black belt in... 2013. 14. I got my black belt in 2014. Yeah. I can't believe that either. I'm six years of black belt this year. No, I'm fucking six years. Are you six years? Yeah. Two yeah. strikes. Second stroke this year? Yeah. yeah but I haven't got it yet. Some, but, yeah. some stroke. Not according to the IBGF, though, because I, you know, I only registered as a black belt last year with the IBGF. Like you a but you, you can compete. You register to compete. Yeah. So that's when you register. Yeah. It's funny. And they only count your, your years in, really? in service. Yeah. Yeah. So according to the IBGF, I'm still a, 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 a no strike black belt. Maybe I'm maybe I'm maybe I have a strike this year. I don't know what that well, is. Well, every three years for the first three. So it could it be chickens. They always fucking change. <coughs> I think when I got my second strike, it was 2016. So I, it was two years initially, yeah, but now it's three years. Oh, my first strike. Sorry. And then it's now it's every three years. Right. So, yeah, I'll be second strike this year anyway. Right. I think I would have been... No, that's not right, is it? Because that wouldn't make any sense. No, sorry. It's every three years. I got my first up, I think, in 2017. Right. I think I got, that's what I got. If I'm right. I think so, anyway. Um, yeah, but according to the other Jeff, no. So if you're out there and you're a black belt, do register with the other Jeff as soon as you get your black belt because you'll be like me. Um, I haven't registered uh, for anything like that. I'm, I'm brutal with stuff like that. Because mm -hmm. I wasn't competing. I was... Um, I was still injured. I was still you were too like, old. I was too old. I was too old and fat. And uh, but like, do you remember? Like, you remember when we started training together? My neck used to go like every yeah every six months. Like, and I would I'd be out of training for a month, and then I'd be back in and back out and back in and back out. So I never bothered. Then I just never said it. I said, you know, what um, do people know about your neck injury or issues? Are you going to edit this out? <laughs> <laughs> No, no. I think it's okay. I think we can talk about that. We can, if you want, we can talk about my erectile dysfunction as well. <laughs> we, can have, we can have a good conversation. But my, no, I had um, about about 2010, maybe. I heard a pop in my neck during Thai boxing. And a lad uh, put my head down in the, in the, in the clinch. Mm. And there was a little pop and I'm like, oh, that's sore. And then I got sore and sore over time. And then uh, I was still fighting MMA at the time. So was it wasn't jujitsu. No, jiu-jitsu didn't do it to me. No, jiu-jitsu probably did do it to me, and I, th I think over time it was probably that's probably what tipped it over the edge, you know. Yeah. But um, in my experience anyway, at least working with people with injuries, injuries are waiting to happen. So unless you get like hit by a car, or unless you get like hit by someone like bam side on on your knee, impacts that's unavoidable. Most injuries that we get are ready to go. So mm. you've built, you've programmed your body into a certain pattern of movement, and then. 
something happens and you, you blame that event, yeah. but actually it's been ready to go. And I think if you, if like, especially in accounts of neck and stuff like that, if I think about it, it had been sore for a while. Like, and obviously these stupid things, like, so if going for arm bars and bottom against massive heavy 120 kilo lads and stuff like that, shit. stupid things stacked. I yeah. remember one night being up, Andy, Andy's student was back there, Carl, actually. Carl was a, Carl was yes. a bit thin, thinner now, but like, at the time he was probably 120, 140 kilos. And uh, I'm triangling him, right? And I got him in the triangle, which was rare enough anyway. I locked my legs. The next thing he starts to stack, and I'm like this. The next thing, we were doing MMA, the next thing something like hits me. Boom, like here around, like on my cheekbone. I was like, why is that? There's something really uncomfortable. It was my groin guard. Oh, fuck. So, <laughs> you can imagine, it was like, what position must I be in? And I was flexible enough. Wasn't that bleeding flexible? So it was horrible. So doing stuff like that, like I mean, that's ridiculous, like yeah. stupid shit. Like, so uh, I got like over time. Then uh, I got a little bit weaker on my hand and stuff like that. I had to pull out of a fight and stuff. I remember throwing toy box. Paddy, uh, my toy boxing coach asked me for a, a double left hook. You know, so left of body, left of the head. And I went left of the body, boom. And I went left of the head. Like a quarter of a second later. Even I was a bit that, you know, I was, I was that quick once, but oh, yeah. I went left of the body and I went left of the head and my hand went poof. And he went, <laughs> and he laughed and he goes, try that again, left of the body, left of the head. And I went, boom. <laughs> I had no power in the second one. So I could do one and I couldn't do the second one. And he was like, I think you should get that yeah. neck shit checked out. And I went and um, uh, at the time it was the recession. So uh, I went in and got my neck scanned and everything like that. And, and they said, okay, surgery. And I went, no, I can't do it. I can't take three months off. Maybe we'd lose the house. Maybe lose the like, you know, that would be the way. That was the way it was. So I said, right, I'll just soldier on, and I soldiered on for another five, six years actually with it, and just like trying to rehab it all the time. And I learned so much about trying to keep a neck in order and keep a neck strong and keep your back strong. But at the time, even though like the nerve was impinged, and it's like the the what had happened to me was I had a bulging disc into the uh, the nerve channel, slightly into the spinal cord, but not quite. <clears throat> and the really bad ones go into the spinal cord, obviously, yeah. for obvious reasons. And uh, what had happened as well is I was building um, like bone in the nerve channel all the time. Um, what they call bone spurs, you've probably heard the term yeah. bone spurs. So it's, there was spurs into the nerve channel all the time. So it was basically like a hose that was getting compressed and pinched, so you had no nerve, um, uh, like you had no nerve conduction up and down from the, from the spine to the hand. And over time, I was losing strength the triceps, so I was doing loads of stuff, and all. Tr- once the hose was pinched, it didn't matter, yeah. you know? And then uh, one time I was cutting cheese at home, like just randomly cutting cheese, and I was like, what the fuck is in the way of the knife? And I went, oh, it's my tongue. <laughs> <laughs> and I couldn't fit my tongue, and I went, I said, maybe today's the day, I'll go and get another MRI. So I did, and um, <clears throat> got in touch with um, uh, uh, Dan Healy, who does the, the MMA, and I hooked yeah. up to him anyway for, for other scans. And uh, uh, where he referred me on to a surgeon then, I got it done in 20, is it 2017? 2017, I think, yeah, 2017, February, so three years done now. They put a plate in, so I got a scar there. They went in through there, they pushed your esophagus to the sides, shaved out the disc, took the disc out, oh, um, put a little plastic washer in instead of your disc, and a titanium plate at the front of the, the spinal column there. And I've met a few lads, it's like a, becomes a support group once you see the, the little scar you go, hey, you were the ACDF surgery and uh, took a bill. Uh, I was back really fast. So the initially your man said, mm. yeah, you were, I remember you, you were back training surprisingly fast. I was back really, really quick. I gave myself six months to get back. Yeah. And I was back in three. And uh, it was but it was it wasn't easy now I have to I'm not patting myself in the back right like that, but I remember going uh, I was lying in the hospital bed on the February, right? I hadn't competed in a long time. I'd competed once, I think, or twice at Brown Belt. And I was lying in the hospital bed, and, I, and I'd signed up for the British Masters mm. that year, the UK Masters in September, lying back on my back, and I was going, but I need, something, need a target. Yeah. And I said, if I get back, I don't care. It, you know, just something to go for. And uh, I got a, I went back, I couldn't get out of the chair for like, you know, you're supposed to get up and walk around, I was in too much pain, and I was thinking, what a joke. Going for a tournament in six months, time, not to be rolling in six months time. And I was up and down. I remember the odd time it, you'd turn around and the, the owner turned around to me and go, well, how do you feel? And I was like, look, there's no way I'm ever training again. There's no yeah. way. You can't train. There's no way. How can I do it? And I started look, looking up college courses online. I'm going to have to go and do something. Yeah. I'm going to have to go teaching or something like that, you know? So uh, I was looking up, like, I had a degree in history and English, but, like, uh, I was looking at my H-dip to go teaching. I was like, look, this is, this is what I'm going to have to do, you know, because I'm not going to be able to train. And then uh, 
little green shoots and then about six weeks in to rehab I said making no progress no less pain nothing like that we went back for my referral and uh, I was like oh, really miserable I was going there's no way this guy this is going to be bad news he's going to come in here and he's going to tell me I'm sorry mate it hasn't worked yeah. so he comes in does an x-ray he sits up and he goes right and he's doing his notes and he was a judo black belt as well Martin Murphy's name and uh, he was like right uh, he's doing a few notes so back to training next week little light movements and I went sorry I don't think you understand I can't walk like I can't like walk without pain like it's hurting me and he goes yeah but you know we need to get back to doing something and so just let's go back and I remember going I have no no way there's no way no possibility whatsoever and uh, but no I went back and I, I followed it I said no screw it I'm going to go back I went yeah. back lifting weights that I, I, I'll be back lifting weights for that light weights but I went back and I started to, to and slowly over time it's just a matter of confidence really a lot, a lot yeah. of you know I think as well with the, with the injuries and then within probably yeah, three months I was fully trained still more or less over and stuff like that but within three months so it's not a it's not, something, not a journey I'd recommend for anybody but like but it's not the end of the world no 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 and, and are you lucky of wi- which C5 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 lucky C6. where it was if it was higher would you have been uh, higher I think it's worse yeah the higher fall is worse yeah. than the and then I think and I'm not like saying I think if you get it in the low back like if you get in the lumbar spine I think it's it's more difficult to come back from because your spine's always under load there. Mm. So I've got habits that I have to do to try and make sure my neck stays healthy. Like when I'm sitting with the laptop and the computer, look at the phone, yeah. or like this, is not a good idea. Um, I think it's based on what I know of lads coming back from the lumbar version, of getting that kind of fusion, I think it's easier to come back from from there. Because there's no constant walking around. Yeah. You know, you can't. Unless you have a big head. Like I do have a big, big fucking head, though. That's the only problem. There is a lot of weight in there, like, you know, so hanging you, off it. Do you know what you're going to have to do? Um, Can I put that? No, no, no. Just put, put that down. No. Put your, your sponsored bottle down. Um, you're going to have to edit in a picture of Bats Rutten. Do you know Bats Rutten? Yeah. This is what he looks like. Look. Give the Bats Rutten look. Ka-ching. What does Hello. it mean? Dang it, dang it, dang it, dang it, dang it, dang it, dang it. You do not speak like that to my wife. Ding. Yeah, yeah. I actually own that DVD somewhere. The self-defense one. Yeah, bought it. Ah, uh, yeah. I wish I Comedy. got it. I have it at home somewhere. It's up in the attic. Yeah. Oh man. Yeah, it has to be on YouTube. I've got some my jokes. I was looking at the the stuff that I had originally. So when I started to learn jujitsu, right? One of the things that I had was um, the Gracie. It was Hoist. I think maybe Hoyler doing self-defense it was the gracie self-defense he just i took a photo of it and i sent it to Beryl quinlan i went look what i found in my attic and I, it was it was written out a box of books and it's nearly pristine i'd say i never yeah. read it and uh, i remember looking at buying it and going there's all this gun defense and knife defense defense against the gun the guy's like holding your hair like you know <laughs> hey <laughs> wrist lock and so what you still yeah, got defense against a knife against your throat yeah it's like what are you gonna do and you're like i'm gonna give him my wallet that's my self-defense talk in school in schools yeah. they go um you know, I'll give them the usual talk. I do the, the thing about um, like the, the shortened version, right? So, you know, like, you know, there's nothing that you have of value that's greater than your life. And there's not even anything that's worth getting stabbed for that's in your pockets, you know. And, you know, what if somebody comes up to you and knife? So, well, I'd hand, them, I'd hand them all whatever I had. And then after that, you know, of course, you, you, if they're still insisting on, on threatening you, then you have to take action, you know. And like, what if somebody threatened you with a, gu- with a gun? And I'd say, take the cocaine out of your boot. if they come up with you you're probably a a drug dealer that's probably what you do consider your career choices that's your next your next move but not for uh, not for Hoyler and Henner and uh, all those guys different world though in the states right you could probably get away with it